Hi everybody, this is Dr. Madhuri from Team MDS Counter. So in this video, I am going to discuss about the classification of general anesthesia and few important general features of the inhalational anesthetics. So if you see this term anesthesia, this means a reversible loss of response to a noxious stimuli. And there are of two types of anesthesia as all of us know that local anesthesia which is regularly used in our dental clinics which in which their consciousness is maintained. But if you take the general anesthesia here we will see the loss of consciousness. There is a term called as balanced anesthesia. So to call it as a balanced anesthesia there are four things to be happened that is unconsciousness, analgesia, muscle relaxation and abolition of compensatory reflex responses. So if these four things are present, then it is called as a balanced anesthesia. If you take the classification of anesthesia, general anesthetics, this is of two types, there is inhalational and the second one is of intravenous. And again this inhalational is divided into a gaseous type of inhalational agents or a liquid types of inhalational agents. So, this gaseous inhalational agents include nitroxide, nitrous oxide, endonox and xenon. This xenon is an ideal or a noble inhalational agent. So, if you take the liquid type of inhalational agents, these are all of the examples. So, actually there are many of this listed in the, here. But you can remember easily with the ending with an, an. So, if the in most of these in liquid type of inhalational uh, agents will end with the AIN. So if you take this, they are like chloroform, cyclopropane, trilling, ether, halothene, enflurane, isoflurane, desflurane, sevoflurane and methoxyflurane. These are all the examples of liquid type of inhalational agents. So if you take the intravenous agents, they are of inducing agents and the slower acting drugs. And this inducing agents include theopentone, methoxyhexidone, propofol, ethomidate and ketamine. And if you see the slower acting drugs, again the slower acting drugs are subdivided into three groups. The first group is benzodiazepines, benzodiazepines which includes diazepam, lorazepam and midazolam. The second groups are like opioids which includes fentanyl, remifentanyl, sufentanyl and alfentanyl. So you can uh, remember with this nil at the end and the last group is of neuroleptic and the neuroleptic example there is only one drug in this category that is droperidol. So this is the classification of stages of anesthesia which is given by the Gudel. So if you see this classification there are of four stages here and again in the third stage there are of four planes but in this thing you have to remember the one point that is first plane and the second plane is the thing where we will do the dental surgical procedures. So if you take the stage 1 of general anesthesia, it is also called as a stage of analgesia. And here this stage will begin with the inhalation to the loss of consciousness. And pupil, if you see the pupil of the patient, it will be normal. And the other features includes like patient is conscious, he will be in a dreamlike state, reflexes will be normal and respiration are normal. So all are normal, all reflexes and respiration will be normal in the stage 1, that is stage of analgesia. If you take the stage 2, it is called as a stage of excitement, okay. And this stage will start from the loss of consciousness to the gain of rhythmical respiration. If you see the pupil in the stage, it will be large and divergent. And other features like heartbeat, blood pressure and muscle tone will be increased whereas respiration will be irregular and there is the involuntary movements can be seen like micturition and the defecation can be involuntary in the stage 2 of anesthesia. If you see the stage 3 as I have told it consists of 4 planes plane 1, 2, 3 and 4 and the, in this 4 planes the first plane and the second plane are important because our dental procedures can be conducted in these 2 planes. So if the stage 3 is of surgical anesthesia where it starts or it extends from onset of regular respiration to the cessation of spontaneous breathing. So in the plane 1 there will be of roving of eyeballs. In the second plane, you will see loss of cornea and laryngeal reflexes. In the third plane, you will see pupil starts dilation. 
and right reflex is lost. Whereas in the fourth plane, you will see that intercostal paralysis and the pupil is dilated here. And in this other features like muscle tone, heart rate increases, whereas blood pressure and respiration will be decreased. Coming to the last stage, that is medullary paralysis, where there is cessation of breathing. Then because of this cessation of breathing, there is circulation failure and finally leads to the death. And if you take the case of pupil, pupil here, it will be of widely dilated pupil. And muscles will be flabby, pulse will be of thready pulse and blood pressure will be very low. So, these are the four stages of general anesthesia. So, coming to the general features of inhalational anesthetics, which we have seen in the classification earlier. So, we have talked about the stages of anesthesia, right? So, this stages of anesthesia can be differentiated only when a slow acting agents are used. So, this inhalational anesthetics have two important properties. That is maximum allular concentration, which is also called as a MAC and blood gas partition coefficient. Okay. So, here there are two important points to remember. One is potency, that is this potency of the drug is inversely proportional to the minimum allular concentration and the second point is speed of onset and recovery of the drug and this speed of onset and recovery of the drug is inversely proportional to the blood gas partition coefficient. If MAC is of high for a drug, then the potency of the drug will be low. If blood gas partition coefficient is high for a drug, then speed of onset and recovery of the drug will be low. So, these are the two important things. If you see this minimum allular concentration, it will measure the potency of a drug. And the nitrous oxide will have a highest MAC. As it has a highest MAC, it is the least potent. And the second thing is methoxyfluorine, which has a low MAC. As it has a low MAC, then it is most potent drug. Then we will come to this blood gas partition coefficient. It will determine the speed of onset and recovery. So, the fastest acting drug and with a low blood gas partition is desflurane. And the slowest acting drug with high blood gas partition coefficient is methoxyfluorine. So, these two are irreversibly proportional and these two are irreversibly proportional. So, coming to the systemic effects of inhalational agents. So, first we will see the respiratory thing. So, in this respiratory thing, the maximum respiratory depression is caused by the enflurane. Whereas, this actually this inhalational agents will blunt the response to hypercapnia and hypoxia. So, the agent which do this thing is halothane. And this halothin is also have a under effect on respiration that is maximum bronchodilation is caused by the halothin. And the last is very important. All these inhalational agents reduce the ciliary activity. But only there is one inhalational agent which will not reduce that is ether. Ether will not reduce the ciliary activity. So respiratory is done. So we will go with the cardiac now. So in this cardiac. Uh, actually, all these inhalation agents will decrease the cardiac output except two drugs that is isoflurane and desflurane. And the maximum decrease, I mean the drug which decreases the blood pressure in maximum amount is isoflurane. Whereas the increased blood pressure is cyclopropane. As this isoflurane decreases the blood pressure it is a choice in controlled hypotension whereas this cyclopropane increases the blood pressure it is used in the patients who has a shock then maximum cardiac contractility will be seen with the halothane and if you see the baroreceptor reflex it is blunted maximum with the halothane and it is not blunted or it is not affected with the isoflurane so this is with the cardiac effects of inhalation agents then coming to the liver toxicity actually there are three drugs which produce this liver toxicity three inhalational so one is halothene the second is chloroform and third one is the methoxyfluorine then if you take the hepato i mean like hepatotoxicity is done if you take the nephrotoxicity nephrotoxicity is caused by two drugs that is methoxyfluorine and sevoflurane okay and this methoxyfluorane is associated with vasopressin resistant polyuric renal failure this is very important to note 
Why? Because this methoxyfluorine is high in fluoride content. So, because of this high fluoride content, it will cause the vasopressin resistant renal failure. And why this fluoride is added in this methoxyfluorine? Because this methoxyfluorine is highly inflammable. So, to decrease the, decrease the inflammability, fluoride is added in this methoxyfluorine. So, if you take the blood, nitric oxide will cause the megaloblastic anemia and finally leads to the marrow suppression also. And coming to the skeletal muscles, maximum relaxation of the skeletal muscles is with the ether. Uh, and remember, all our inhalation agents are the skeletal muscle relaxants except the nitrous oxide. Okay, and in this systemic effects, uh, you have to people have to remember the what are the exceptions where there is no uh, muscle relaxation where there is no decrease in blood pressure and where there is no blunt of reflexes. So, these exceptional cases are important. And here there are four important the general points that is maximum analgesia is uh, produced by the trilin. The good analgesia is produced by the ether. Maximum metabolic effects is shown by chloroform. Whereas ether and cyclopropane can cause the hyperglycemia. So, if you take the inflammability, inflammability which is the one of the important feature of this inhalation agents, ether and propane, cyclopropane will have a highly inflammable. Hence, they should not be used when cautery is done or cautery should not be used when, when these two agents are used. And there are three agents, inhalational anesthetics like sevoflurane, trilene and methoxyfluorine. They should not be used when there is a closed circuit. Remember these points. Because they uh, and even these things will have a, these th three can react with the soda line. Okay. If sevoflurane uh, reacts with the soda line, it will produce the compound A which is a nephrotoxin. Whereas if trillin reacts with the soda line, it will produce two agents, two things that is uh, dichloroacetone and the phosgene. This dichloroacetone is a neurotoxic and mostly this neurotoxicity can be seen with the fifth and the seventh cranial nerves. Whereas the, the phosgene agent there is ARDS that is acute respiratory distress syndrome can be seen with this phosgene. And the last thing is methoxyfluorine when used in the closed circuit it can re react with this rubber tubing which is very dangerous or very inflammable so hence these three things cannot be used when there is a closed circuit so this uh, there are few gases uh, which are uh, filled in the cylinders so you which are used in the general anesthesia okay so these cylinders are have been uh, given with some color coding which is very important for us and uh, if you see this nitrous oxide it is given a color coding with the blue if you take the cyclopropane, it is blue, whereas cyclopropane is of orange. When for the air cylinder, it is given with, you can see in the picture, there is a gray and white. So, this air is filled in a gray colored cylinder with a white veins. And if you take the oxygen, in this oxygen also there are two colors. That means oxygen is filled with a black cylinder with white wings, whereas carbon dioxide is filled in the gray color cylinder and helium is filled in a brown color cylinder and if you take this entonox also there are two colors you can see here so this is filled in a blue color cylinder with white wings so these are the very important things to note down as the color coding is very important to identify the types of the gaseous agents so this is this part has been done and uh, which explains or which gives you a brief idea of the general property of this inhalational anesthetics okay so stay home and uh, stay well happy learning with mds conquer